Right now, nearly a dozen states have proposed legislation that would either limit or ban drag show performances in front of children. Now, these efforts range from prohibiting minors to attending from attending a drag event or show to requiring bars or restaurants that host them to register as sexually oriented businesses, even in some cases going so far as to propose charging parents who choose to bring their children to a drag story hour. In Tennessee, where the proposed legislation would prohibit performances on public property, when Republican state senator tells CNN the bill isn't anti-drag in his view, but pro-child, and likens it to laws that keep kids out of strip clubs. The shows and drag performers have become a new target in the culture world, and the reaction has taken many by surprise. A Connecticut church recently hosted a drag bingo event. It was a fundraiser for an upcoming youth mission trip. The backlash shocked the pastor. Well, it is not our intention to make any kind of political statement. This event is certainly in keeping with our commitment to being an open and affirming church, to seek understanding in love and not to join our voices to the chorus of fear that seems to animate so much of the negative response to this event. I'm joined now by Reverend Todd Vetter from the First Congregational Church in Madison, Connecticut, and Jonathan Hamilt, he's executive director of Drag Queen Story Hour. Appreciate both of you gentlemen joining us this morning. You know, Jonathan, I want to start with you. Um, as you look at this, and you've been such an important part of these events, what do you think it is about drag performers, about these events that have made them such a focus? Why do you think people are so threatened? Yeah, um, thank you so much for having me today. Um, you know, drag is a, uh, is a traditional art form, and I think its roots in the queer community is where the upset is. Um, if drag was something else, pantomime, um, clown, I don't think people would have an issue with it, but um, I think it really stems from homophobia and transphobia. Um, yeah, and this is nothing new. We've seen this uh, for years, so... In addressing your congregation a few weeks ago, um, Reverend Vetter, you said in your 20 years of ministry, you had never experienced such hatred or venomous language from people claiming to be Christians. What were people specifically so upset about when it came to this bingo event? Eric, it was hard to really get a clear sense um, because very few of the, of the responses we got, the negative responses we got, were um, were really um, reason, right? It was really just this sort of explosion of passion and emotion and feeling. Uh, I think for reasons that I think are unique to every individual, uh, there's just a deep threat inherent here. Um, Jonathan's comments are well taken. I think it is uh, my sense is that, that people are using drag performance and the drag community as scapegoats. And do you think, Jonathan, people actually understand what happens at some of the events? I mean, for people who've never been to a drag story hour, what is that event like? Yeah, I mean, Drag Story Hour is exactly like it sounds. It's drag um, storytellers that read children's books in libraries or schools. Uh, we sing children's songs and we do uh, an arts and crafts activity. It's like any other story time, story hour you've been to, but maybe someone a little more fabulous who is reading. <laughs> Maybe a little more fabulous. I like that. We could all use a little more fabulous, I think, in our lives. Um, you know, Reverend, as I understand it, the event ultimately was was standing room only. And again, this was this was a fundraiser for uh, one of your youth groups for a mission trip to Appalachia, where, as I understand it, they'll be helping to rebuild homes. Maybe the bingo event itself wasn't initially part of the lesson, but I imagine it's become part of a really important lesson, not only for your congregation, but for the community as well, Reverend. Yeah, and, and I do, I do, I do want to say that the, the the positive response and the generosity of response that we enjoyed with this event was extraordinary. It's unlike anything that I've ever experienced. Uh, the 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 number of people that we had to turn away because we simply reached capacity uh, was probably about 150 or 200, and they their generosity, right, their patience, their forbearance, uh, their generosity was extraordinary. Uh, so. I, I do think that the overall um, uh, experience was extremely positive. Um, it was an affirmation of who we are as a church, um, how we think about the commandment to love our neighbor. Uh, and I think it, it uh, whatever lessons the, the community has taken away from this uh, has been, I think, positive. But I think it's been a great affirmation for us about That's who we are and who we're called to be.
And it's certainly an, an important motivation for conversation. Jonathan, um, conversation seems to be lacking a lot these days, um, which is what we're striving to do with this conversation this morning. I find it interesting that parental choice has really become a rallying cry in a number of circles in this country. And those seem to be some of the same voices, Jonathan, that are pushing for this legislation, which in some states would actually charge parents who bring their kids to a drag story hour or require them to take parenting classes. I mean, how do you how do you square those two? How do you try to make sense of this moment? Yeah, uh, you know, it's interesting. You know, drag is an art form, and like any art form, um, it can be tailor made to any age or specific group of people. Um, but our organization is a children's literacy nonprofit where we read books um, to instill inclusivity, um, equity, um, and inclusion. And um, it's just interesting that people that are so, you know, pro, you know, parental rights are actually stopping a lot of parents from attending mm -hmm. our totally optional, you know, story hour. And, you know, we're here to bridge, uh, bridge, you know, communities together. And we've had lots of um, events in around New York and around the world. And a survivor of a conversion therapy, I think it's so important that we bridge these communities. A lot of queer people um, have been hurt by um, by Christianity. So kind of bridging those gaps and bringing people back to spirituality and connecting these um, intersections is really important. So, jo yeah. Jonathan Hamill, Reverend Todd Vetter, really appreciate you both joining us with your insight today. And um, I would also encourage folks uh, to take a look at your message um, from last month, Reverend Vetter, um, in response to, to some of the some of the response that you received. Thank you both for being with us today. Appreciate it. Thank you, Erica.